Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Our guest today is Emily Kuczynski. She's here with us as a certified genetic counselor and coordinator of the Cancer Risk Assessment and Counseling Program for the MedStar Health Cancer Network. And she's going to talk with us about the benefits of high-risk assessment cancer program uh, there at MedStar. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Emily. Yes, thank you so much for having me. You're a genetic counselor. What exactly does genetic counseling uh, entail? So genetic counseling um, is working with patients and families who are at high risk for diseases that might be inherited throughout the family. And I specialize in cancer genetics. So I work with patients and families who have personal or family history of cancer that is either very early onset or there's multiple cases of similar cancers in the family that's suggestive of an inherited cause. Are we talking about any type of cancer that um, lends itself to be inherited or uh, just those certain types of cancers? Yeah, that's a good question. So the majority of cancer is not inherited. Only about 5 to 10% is. And there are a few cancer types um, that we, we think of as, as most inherited. And those would include um, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, colon cancer, uterine, um, and also pancreatic and melanoma. So cancers like lung cancer and cervical, um, we, we don't think of as inherited types of cancer. Are your recommendations uh, based on the cancer itself or the genetic predisposition for that type of cancer? So we, yeah, we use a combination of genetic testing and also um, personal risk factors to determine someone's risk for cancer. So if if someone has a genetic um, mutation and let's say like the, the BRCA gene, which is the most common cause of inherited breast and ovarian cancer, then we would offer them both um, extra screening options and also preventative options. So they may want to have their breast or um, ovaries removed, um, you know, based on their genetic testing result. But even for patients who don't have any type of genetic mutation, they do the genetic testing and it's negative, um, we may still also recommend um, extra screenings or other options because of their um, strong family history of cancer. Does, I, I guess on, on a scale of one to 10, one being uh, maybe you might get it, maybe you won't live a good life, and 10 being you're definitely going to get this cancer because of your, uh, your DNA, because of your genetics. How often do you um, recommend someone to, as you say, have a mastectomy or, uh, or, or their ovaries removed based simply on the genetics and not uh, any other uh, factor? So um, I think it, we really have to answer that question in two parts because for breast cancer risk, um, we do really let the patient um, decide what, what they are most comfortable with. So some patients will go the increased screening route. So instead of just doing mammograms every year like most women would do, they, we would also recommend a breast MRI in our high-risk women. Mm -hmm. um, and so some women are comfortable doing that, knowing that it's not going to um, – reduce the chance that they get breast cancer. It's just going to allow us to pick it up early and hopefully they'd have to avoid, um, you know, major treatment for their breast cancer since it's picked up early. Um, so it's really driven by, you know, a combination of um, what, what the patient wants and desires and then, you know, also, um, you know, what their end goal they're looking for. But regarding um, ovarian cancer, that we really don't have any good screening. We don't have any routine screening for ovarian cancer. Um, the pap smear that is done um, in, in a woman's GYN office is, is really just addressing cervical cancer. It really doesn't say anything about the ovaries. So because we don't have any screening um, methods for ovarian cancer, we strongly recommend, of course, it's still up to the patient to make that decision, but we strongly recommend removing the ovaries um, once childbearing is complete, usually um, around the age of, of 40 for most women. Do you ever find yourself attesting a young person uh, faced for breast cancer or, ovar or breast cancer or any type of inherited cancer in their uh, late teens or early 20s and then recommending that they watch themselves for the remainder of their life for any symptoms or signs? Or do you wait until someone is much older uh, to start doing genetic testing? 
So we really usually um, do genetic testing in, in the early 20s. We don't usually do it in the teens because even if they are positive, um, we wouldn't recommend starting um, any extra screenings or any change in their medical management until they're usually um, 25. So that we feel like that 25 is a good age for most women who know that they um, have a high risk of having a genetic mutation for breast or ovary cancer. Um, we recommend that they start testing then. Um, it really can actually be quite you know, damaging, like psychologically to know in your teens that you have a genetic mutation, but we're really not going to start doing anything about it, you know, until the mid 20s. So it is, it is recommended um, to do testing around the age of 25. Now, the only exception would be is if there's an especially young, you know, breast cancer in the family, like if somebody was diagnosed at 20 with breast mm -hmm. cancer, um, then yeah, we might want to, we might want to do genetic testing earlier for, for the women in that family. But typically we would recommend starting testing at, at 25. When you're doing genetic testing and you uh, come across a cancer that is not one of the ones that uh, uh, is typically an inherited type of cancer. What types of steps do you take then as far as recommendations for your patient? Yeah, so, you know, genetic testing can certainly help guide us on, on what cancers that person may be at risk for. Um, but we, we can never forget the family history. That's such an uh, important tool. So if they test positive, let's say, for a genetic mutation that makes them higher risk for colon cancer and uterine cancer, we know those cancers run together in, in Lynch syndrome, which is the most common um, inherited colon cancer syndrome. But let's say they also have a lot of breast cancer in their family. So even though it hasn't been um, historically linked mm -hmm. to, Lynch, to Lynch syndrome, um, we would say, you know, well, we can't ignore that you have all this breast cancer in your family. So we would still consider you at higher risk for breast cancer when we want to follow you, um, you know, closer for that. We may not recommend as um, aggressive as measures as if they tested positive for a breast cancer gene mutation, but we still still may modify their management. We still may want to do earlier and more frequent mammograms or breast MRIs to address that family history, even though it didn't really show up in their genetic testing results. How far back in a person's family history do you typically go? Uh, great grandparents, great great, or more recent? Typically, we do um, three generations, so we go back to grandparents, we do aunts, uncles, first cousins, and of course, all their first degree relatives, siblings, and children. Um, but we, you know, we'll, as genetic counselors, we'll take as far back as they know. So if, if especially if the if cancer seems to be running, you know, in a certain branch of the family. So if, if grandmother had cancer, I, I will ask about the great grandmother, great grandfather, you know, to see if that pattern is there, to see if if a parent also had cancer, because we know that these genetic mutations do run through families in a dominant fashion. So if a parent has the genetic mutation, it's 50-50 that each of the children will. So I want to see if, if those patterns are there. You know, if grandma had 12 siblings and grandma was the only one with cancer, then that doesn't seem too suggestive that um, a dominant, you know, inherited cancer syndrome is running through. So if they know more distant um, information, we'll certainly take it and, and look at it and put it into the the big picture of, you know, whether or not there may be an inherited cancer syndrome. So I would say that the, the benefits of this high risk assessment uh, cancer program are pretty, uh, pretty obvious. Where can we get more information about the MedStar Health Cancer Network? So if people are looking for information about the um, high risk clinic, I would recommend that they give um, the genetic counseling to give me a call. And, and um, my phone number is 443-777-7656. Uh, um, they can also look up, um, there's a, a page uh, under the MedStar Health Cancer Network. If they Google that, um, there is a specific page for the high risk clinic. And there's also an online uh, risk assessment that will be available shortly where they can take a short quiz. It takes literally a minute um, and it will tell them whether or not based on family history that they would be at, at higher risk and should you know, be seen in our clinic. So those are some ways they could get more information. Well, I thank you, Emily, for coming in today. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio, this health supplier segment with Emily Kaczynski. She's a certified genetic counselor and coordinator of the Cancer Risk Assessment and Counseling Program for the MedStar Health Cancer Network. 
Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud.